Hello, I am Alexis Rakasi, and today I would like to talk to you about how using the information processing approach will help you to become an effective teacher. Taking an information processing approach in teaching is dependent on how capable you believe your students are of learning through this approach. This cognitive approach emphasizes that children manipulate information, monitor it, and strategize about it. Memory and thinking are also involved in this approach. As children age and mature, they become better users of this information processing approach. They are able to process more information and do it at a faster approach. According to Robert Siegler, there are three components that work together to create change in children. They are encoding, automaticity, and strategy construction. Encoding is when information is sensed. Automaticity is processing information with little effort. Strategy construction is discovering new processing procedures. In addition to these change mechanisms, is self-modification. This is when children are using what they have previously learned to make new decisions. Attention is focusing on mental resources. There are four types of attention. Selective attention is when you focus on a specific aspect and ignore others. Divided attention concentrates on more than one activity at a time. Sustained attention is when attention is maintained over an extended period of time. Lastly, there is executive attention, where attention is focused on goals, dealing with different situations, and monitoring progress. Memory is the retention of information over time. Memory is divided into three categories. These categories are encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding is getting the information into memory. Storage is retaining the information over time, and retrieval is taking information out of storage. After children encode information or take the information in, they need to store it. This is called the model of three memory stores. Here, they can keep this information for different lengths of time. It can be a sensory memory, which only lasts for an instant. It can be a short-term memory, which lasts 30 seconds unless rehearsed. Lastly, it can be a long-term memory, which is when information stays for a long period of time in an almost permanent state. Retrieving information is the last step. If the information is something that is often repeated, like what month it is or what year it is, the information will come out of their mouths instantly. If it is a specific question based on something they just learned or someone they just met, then the information may be harder to retrieve. You must be able to relay information to students effectively so it becomes a long-term memory. Metacognition is about thinking about thinking. One's awareness and ability to regulate one's own thinking and model one's understanding. Our goal as teachers is to teach our students to be good thinkers. They should be able to think about the way they think things or, and monitor their own learning. To help students think about thinking, you can apply metacognitive strategies in the classroom to help your students be good thinkers and successful learners. Some ways that you can help students is by giving the students different ways to remember things, like a mnemonic device. For example, a rhyme or a song to remember something better. Role playing is also a good example. Asking, asking questions and reflect on their learning is also helpful. It is important to remember that all students learn differently, so you need to see what works well for all of your students. 
encourage students to take pre-tests before learning a new topic, and then compare the results with the exam after the lesson is over to see, mu see how much they have learned about the particular topic. Thank you so much for taking time out to review my presentation.